Before we get into our news blast, we here at the Hockey Minute understand that some things are bigger than sports. We're a hockey podcast first and foremost. Our goal is to entertain, to discuss the sport that we love. But recent events call for bigger conversations. And um, it's, it's not an easy subject to get into. There's a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different opinions. And not everyone's going to agree. But uh, before we get into the news blast, we thought we should just discuss the recent events surrounding Minneapolis, George Floyd's death, and uh, the subsequent protests and, and riots around the United States. It's different here in Canada, I'll say that. Um, we don't see things, uh, you know, as, as uh, intensely, I guess, in, in the Vancouver area. It's a very diverse city, but there still is racism from all sides. At the end of the day, I think that what the world, what, what America and, and, you know, Canada to a, a point as well, uh, we just need to just learn to love, to accept, to, to grow together and uh, to educate and, uh, you know, to make sure that we're not still living in, in a, a community of just lack of, of understanding and lack of empathy. So, you know, there's so much to unpack on this certain subject, and this certainly isn't the platform to necessarily do so. But, uh, Brandon, uh, what are your thoughts on the last couple of weeks here? I mean, I, I, I think you said it perfectly. Um, there's there's a, a lot of places to get this kind of news if, if, if you're looking for it. We just really wanted to, to tip our cap to those out there doing some good work. And if, if you want, if you're so inclined, I think every NHL player and or almost every NHL player, it feels like every NHL team has made a statement about uh, about the events. And those are all absolutely available everywhere. So uh, from our perspective, we wish everybody to, you know, love and health and happiness. And uh, we're going to try and have some fun with the hockey podcast here. This is not a, a subject that uh, that you know we feel that we need to get into. So, da 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 da. Hello out there! It's time for the hockey minute, your source for all of today's hockey news with some opinion. Strap in for the fastest news in the NHL. This episode is proudly brought to you by fucking nobody. We don't have any sponsors. Now, here's your hosts, Brandon and Ryan. And here we are. Welcome back to another edition of the Hockey Minute. I am your host, Brandon. With me, as always, my co-host, Ryan. And today we've got a great news blast for June 9th, 2020. But first, please subscribe with whatever podcatcher you use. Leave us a review on iTunes or a voicemail on Anchor if you're fired up about something we said or something you think we should be doing better. We'll play it on the podcast, I promise. All right, before we get into our news blast for today, let's check in with my shredded beast of a co-host, Ryan. How you doing, man? Oh my goodness. I cannot tell you how excited I am. First of all, it is, uh, it is Sunday... June 7th. It's the two-year anniversary of the Washington Capitals winning their first Stanley Cup. <laughs> uh, just so everyone knows, I, I did a leg day at the gym, so my calves are no longer calves. They're cows. They're, they're sh- sh- <laughs> as Brandon mentioned, shredded. Uh, quads for the gods, all that kind of stuff. And listen, I don't want to. I don't want to give too much away here, but holy smokes, guys! This podcast. If you had told me that I was going to host a podcast and we were going to have some of the guests we have coming on. I would have just laughed in your face. But we did a poll recently on Instagram, asked people, what would you rather have more of? More guests or, or more uh, kind of team breakdown, stuff like that? It was, uh, it was a resounding 100% said, enough of you and Brandon, bring on more guests. <laughs> so we got guests. And I'm not, you know, again, we, we've got guests that, uh, you know, we've got some former NHLers coming on. We've got some media personalities. I'm not going to name names. But it's going to be a busy week here at the Hockey Minute, and uh, I am so excited for what's to come. Brandon, enough about my calves. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing awesome, buddy. And you know what? It's just this this whole momentum is just building like crazy with our guests. I, I'm going to feel like we're going to need a, a daily two-hour interview podcast with the way we're lining these things up. We're going to be backed up till 2022, but that's a, an incredible problem to have, man. I'm just I'm so stoked that people are obviously enjoying it, and we're, uh, we're growing the way that we are. All right, let's get into our news blast for June 9th, 2020. Is Henrik Lundqvist ready to move on from the Rangers? Could he be willing to chase a cup with another team? Max Kellerman, who? From ESPN. Again, who? 
takes a shot at the NHL. He says it's not one of the four major sports. The NHL and NHLPA are working hard to extend the CBA before the resumption of play. According to Elliot Friedman, the league wants long-term stability and the players want a cap on escrow. And an unknown Pittsburgh Penguins player has tested positive for COVID-19. Finally, we got a great voicemail from a listener that we'll play and get into. All right, Ryan, so... Recently, Henrik Lundqvist has expressed his frustration with the way things played out for him in, in the last season with the Rangers. Quote, what am I supposed to say about that? I had a picture of how the season would develop, what I had in mind. Uh, when things turned out the way they did, I was surprised. But at the same time, part of me understands the situation. I'm not blind. They're thinking ahead. There are many pieces that go into building a team right now, but also for the future. You're going to have to widen the view a little, but it wasn't like I projected my own plan for sure. It's clear that I'm thinking about how much I love hockey and how long I think I can continue or even want to continue. I also realize that I can't look that far ahead. Now, we're ready to run this summer and this season. I also know that in November and December last year, when I was at my best, I played as well as I did several years before. It was incredibly fun. If I can find a situation where I play and deliver like that, why not continue? So, Ryan, I'll ask you, is it it more likely now that we can see him playing in a a new, new city? It's starting to sound that way. I mean, we've we've talked about Lundqvist for so long on this podcast. Uh, you know, we had a whole episode dedicated to his trials and tribulations with the Rangers. But yeah, athletes are prideful people, and I think for Henrik, you think about he's a Vesna winner. He he got to the Cup final in 2014. Mm-hmm. He wants to win, and I think he wants to do it as a Ranger. And I think that. I mean, there's countless athletes that, that go through this, right? We saw it with Marty, uh, Martin St. Louis when he was in Tampa a little bit. Like, he kind of had the same issue where his role was maybe a little bit diminished, and he, he kind of took it personally. He didn't get picked for the Olympic team and everything. And I think Lundquist right now is struggling with the fact that you got these two young goalies that are coming in, and they're just playing better. And yep. so who knows, right? I mean, we we talked about it before. It's hard to move that kind of a contract, but... To me, it sounds like he's kind of saying, hey, if I got to go somewhere else to win, I want to do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder if he's going to be an option for being exposed to Seattle come the expansion draft, and maybe that'll be his, his way out, just kind of like uh, Marc-Andre Fleury. And one, one kind of interesting note for, for Lundqvist is just, you know, he, he basically said he was going down with the ship, and he, he wanted to stick it out and see if he could stay around for another cup run. And now that they have kind of turned the team around, they're like, ah, you know, thanks, but I think we're actually going to be better with our other two uh, Russian backups, so... You know, thanks for your service. Uh, we got the story about Max Kellerman from ESPN uh, <laughs> yeah. taking a shot at the NHL. Says that it's not one of the four major sports. Now, I don't know what Max Kellerman thinks that the four major sports are in uh, you know in the U.S., but it's such a dumb thing to say. Like seriously, the, the hockey is incredibly huge in Canada. It's huge in a lot of places in the United States. And Max Kellerman comment or is like a boxing kind of commentator, yeah, uh, or boxing boxing writer. Like uh, I don't know about you, I've only watched one boxing match in my life. It was Conor McGregor <laughs> versus Floyd Mayweather, <laughs> and it was on my brother's wedding, so we just had it on in the background. Right. Uh, what are your thoughts when you hear a guy like you know from ESPN of all places too? When you hear a guy from ESPN coming out and saying that <laughs> hockey really isn't that big of a deal? You mean when I hear a reporter? That I've never heard of from a network that doesn't cover hockey is 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 slandering hockey. I I don't think a whole lot about it. I thought kind of the the pushback was pretty funny. I mean, I, I think that was the first uh, tweet from Mike Milbury I've ever agreed with or thing that he said that I've uh, <laughs> I've landed on his side. I just I I, th- I thought I should read the Max Kellerman quote just so we kind of know what we're talking about here. He says, "Listen, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings in the United States of America, but no one really cares about hockey." The old joke is, every town has 20,000 hockey fans and they all have season tickets. So the arenas are always sold out, but the TV ratings don't do anything. It's not one of the four major sports. You're a damn fool. So, I mean, he's kind of a lunatic, right? Like, if he's trying to to say that, like, what, is is the MLS supposed to be bigger than the NHL? Is, Is that what he's trying to say? I just, I don't even understand. Yeah, like I could see baseball being huge. Uh, I can see the NBA being huge. Um, the NFL, by far, is the biggest sport in the U.S. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's like, what, are we going to say that golf's bigger? Probably not. I mean, mm-hmm. most people, if you got golf on, you're, again, that's something you put on in, in the background while you're cleaning your house. Yeah. 
Um, hockey is a sport that, you know, I mean, we've talked about Buffalo, despite being a, a small population, they have one of the biggest TV markets in, in all of hockey, uh, you know, in the top 10 every year. So, like, th- yeah, this Kellerman thing is stupid. Like, yeah, there's some markets that struggle, but I don't know, man. I mean, Vegas became like a new team. They were automatically one of the biggest markets in in North America. And and when teams do well, look at how good Chicago and L.A. were for years, right? L.A., like the Kings were were outclassing the Lakers. And the Lakers had, you know, the late Kobe Bryant still on the team at that point. And so, like, I don't know. Kellerman's an idiot, though. I mean, I think most of the time, most of the people at ESPN say things just for the controversy. I don't know if they actually believe what they say. But if Milbury wants to go toe-to-toe with a shoe, then uh, I'd say we put that on ESPN. That'll probably get more <laughs> ratings than what LeBron had for breakfast. So that, That's it. And I just, I just wanted to read Mike Milbury's uh, tweet real quick here. He says, Hockey isn't alive and well, Max Kellerman. The MLB only has a steady viewership because men over the age of 70 use it as a sleep remedy. I prefer vodka. People love this sport around the world, something neither the NFL nor the MLB can say. Just ask Charles Barkley about our playoff. So, I mean, obviously pretty strong words from a, a, a troll on the other side of the fence, but uh, I just, I don't know, I kind of eat this stuff up. I, I love it when you, you see some real personality fly, and it's not just everybody saying, I love all the other sports. So, that's kind of nice. Did, did you have any other things for Kellerman? ESPN sucks. <laughs> it was an insult, sir, and he deserved it. The NHL and NHLPA, there's two things here. They're working hard to extend the, the CBA, and it, it, I mean, it, we don't know the term there, but uh, the, the league allegedly is looking for stability, and the players want to cap on escrow. And I think the current cap or the current ceiling for escrow is 35%, I'm pretty sure. And for so for people that don't understand escrow, it's basically like if you're paid thirty bucks an hour, that thirty dollars an hour would be contingent on your company making their budget, like their their revenue for the year. And if they made less than that revenue, then they would take it off your check, essentially, right? You would owe the company whatever the you would split the difference up to thirty percent of whatever the losses were. So it's obviously something that the players are are fighting hard to get out of their contract, but it, they, 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 they 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 don't really have you know, public opinion on their side because escrow is a real complicated thing that most people don't really take the time to understand. And then the the second factor is it's millionaires fighting with billionaires. And most people are like, oh, fuck them. We just don't care. (laughs) Yeah, I think right now, especially in the middle of a global pandemic, people don't care. Like, yeah, I worked at a bit, you know, I worked at a bank for four years. I don't know anything about finances or economics. Uh, I just mostly showed up to be like the token male in a, in a all female uh, <laughs> branch and wore my suit. And, you know, it was, it was more just eye candy. Just kidding. But um, I think that, yeah, the escrow thing, I've never really understood it. I heard uh, Jonathan Taves said once that to him it didn't make sense because he goes, if you sign a contract for $10 million and at the end of the year you're giving two or three million back, like, that doesn't make sense. Nobody would want to do that. So I see where the players are coming from. But as far as to your point about them just wanting to uh, kind of extend that CBA, I think the fact that the league is going to be losing a lot of money because of the pandemic, there's going to be no fans at the games. This might be the first uh, negotiation these guys have had in decades where both sides go, man, let's just, let's just hammer it out. And, you know, I was talking with my dad actually uh, just the other day, um, cause my, my company is a union and we had our negotiations. My dad said the best negotiations are where both sides walk away unhappy. Right. And so hopefully, hopefully both sides just get something done. They both walk away pissed off and, uh, and the fans win because we've seen, you know, in my, my 29 years on earth, I've seen a full season get canceled and I've seen half a season get canceled. There was another strike in the early nineties, but I was, uh, just learning how to walk. So I don't recall that. <laughs> And and maybe this is something that, you know, is, is just the, the fans win at the end of the day because the players and the owners just put any sort of differences aside and uh, we get hockey. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'm really curious to see how long they're talking about for that extension and if they're talking about a just a one or two year thing to kind of limp it along or if they're going to go for a four or five year, which I think the players are probably going to be less amenable to. I just wanted to read a real quick quote from uh, Elliot Friedman, who's obviously a, uh, a, a stalwart in the hockey reporting world. He says, quote, The league wants long-term stability. The players want to cap on escrow, and word is that it's being considered. If the season does not resume, their hit would be 35%. Even if there are games, they're looking at 27 or 
Uh, I heard rumblings of a 20% escrow cap over the next few seasons. Others have said they've heard slightly less. A flat salary cap of $81.5 million for a few seasons is possible too. And I think that's, that's really fascinating because obviously that, that flat salary cap is just the NHLPA and NHL agreeing to, it, to those terms, right? They're not going to make that in revenue, especially if they don't have fans in the seat. So basically that's just them saying, let's limp it along until we can make some profit. Yeah, and I think that when <laughs> when fans are allowed back in the games, and you and I know this, we go to Canucks games, you thought beer was expensive now. <laughs> you're gonna come back they're gonna oh have God. like thirty dollars for a budweiser tickets are gonna be you know four hundred dollars <laughs> uh pedersen jersey is gonna be a thousand dollars like it's you know and you have to it's gonna be like one t missing in the last name too so it's gonna be just uh it's gonna be very interesting to see how some of these markets try to get some money back i mean it's you know i can i, I just imagine ticket prices are gonna be the main thing but um, wouldn't shock me. You've you've got me picturing concessions though. Like how the fuck are those lineups gonna look with those little stickers for socially distant? Right, you got six feet apart for miles through the arena. There's no way you could do it. You couldn't have a concession lineup with those rules. And finally, as far as news goes, anyways, an unknown Pittsburgh Penguins player has tested positive for COVID nineteen. Thankfully, the camps haven't started yet. Uh, I've seen some speculation online about who it is. The fact that it's an unnamed player makes me kind of think it's probably not a star player as well as I know it's not Matt Murray because that guy can't catch anything. So (laughs) um, it'll be very, very interesting to see here uh, just how this works with the NHL though. And uh, so Brandon, what are your thoughts? I mean, like I say, I'm assuming the guy's still at home. Yeah. But uh, I mean, what is this, what is this kind of, does this worry you at all with the league trying to come back? Uh, I think it's actually probably pretty fortunate that they're they're catching it now to whatever you know d- degree that they are catching it because most players like you're saying are still away like I think there's four or five Canucks currently in Vancouver and all the other players that are returning have to do a two week quarantine anyway, which is what this guy would have to do right now. So I think it's going to make no difference. But I'm really curious uh, what their threshold, what the league's threshold is for or what their tolerance is for um, for diagnosed cases right like is it 10 percent of a team is it 20 is it 30 there has to be a limit there must be a thing they've talked about so i'd like to see that made public so we can kind of consider what their risk what their risk tolerance is yeah and that's you made a good point right i'm I'm assuming the guy is going to be just at home and but i think from a play like if i'm a member of the penguins and you're getting ready for a camp in a month i'd be kind of worried now to, if, i'm just saying from my perspective if i knew that one of my teammates had it the two week quarantine, well, that's great. I'm assuming they would test the guy before they sent him back out. But then you hear all these stats about some tests are coming back, you know, kind of false, uh, you know, false negatives or false positives. So, yeah, I don't know. I think we we talked about it last week with the Nick Felino comments, Bo Horvat's comments. Like, I do think some players, if if they find out one of their teammates or one of the staff even have it, I can imagine that's going to make some players go, you know what, I don't care, I'm not going. Uh, so I don't know. Hopefully the play, you know, hopefully the player recovers, obviously, but um, hopefully this doesn't put a damper on uh, the promise that we've had of of hockey coming back. Because I know the NBA is coming back now, and this was uh, our this was hockey's chance. This was the NHL's chance to really have a time to themselves to really grow the game. So yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. And one one interesting thing to kind of note for the Pittsburgh player and the the U.S. Department of Defense put out a statement a few weeks ago saying that they would no longer be accepting recruits that had tested positive for COVID-19, like period. So they must feel like there's some, you know, some inherent risk after you've had an infection with it and and who knows to what degree. And if if professional athletes are going to have some fallout down the road from from experiencing it, right? We just we have no idea. So, I mean, I I think these guys... um, I think they have a right to feel a little bit concerned about going into it with that level of uncertainty. And uh, I, I think their concern is is probably amplified by the fact that they're worried about a little bit of social, <clears throat> um, ab- about being a pariah if, if they are the first one to say, hey, look, I'm not, I'm not feeling comfortable, even though I'm healthy, I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. And you, you, I'm wondering if we're even going to see that. And um, if there's going to be a bunch of guys that don't say anything because they're worried about the backlash. Yeah, but again, we we touched on it, right? Like they can't they can't feel that way. Anybody in their job, I think, 
if you put yourself in their shoes, which nowadays nobody does, right? Right. <laughs> you, see, we, you see it on Twitter all the time. People are just like, I can't believe this. It's like, well, put yourself in their shoes. Yeah, if you know, if you had to go back to work, if you were told, well, we're, you got to come back to work and you're not, you know, you don't feel comfortable doing it, you shouldn't have to do it. So, like I say, we'll, we'll monitor this. Like they didn't name the player. They didn't really follow up with anything either. And, uh, and we'll just keep tabs on that and, and update as needed. All right, and, and finally, we, we got an awesome voicemail from a listener, so let's, uh, let's hear that now. And now. Jesus, third time now recording this thing. This is what happens when you can't sleep at 2.30 in the morning. Hey, boys, loving the podcast so far. Content is amazing. Uh, your interviews are, are great, too. Um, three things, Ryan, that, uh, that stash is looking uh, mighty beautiful, bro. you got to keep up that, uh, that radiant red stash. Loving it. Um, secondly want to know Brandon's take. Does he think the Beatles are overrated? Yes or no? We know Ryan's size with me. And thirdly, I want to know who you guys think is the dark horse in each of the Eastern and Western conferences for the NHL and who you guys think is going to win the Cup. So um, finalists and the winner. Back to you. Well, that was my, uh, my good friend Ben. Congrats, Ben. He just bought his first home. He's all grown up now. And uh, he sent us that message, and so he's a uh, he's co-host of Side of Ranch podcast, which we've plugged them before. Uh, great, great show, and they had an episode on about the Beatles, and Ben was staunchly anti Beatles. Uh, he was not, you know, not denying their talent because they do have talent. But what are your thoughts on uh, on the Beatles? Are they maybe a little bit overrated? Ah, that's that's a loaded question, my friend. That's that's tough. You know, and I, I probably used to, I probably held that that opinion for a long time. I mean, if for some reason, the Stones are always contrast with the Beatles, right? It's it's if you had to pick one or the other to only exist, which one would you take? And for forever, my answer was the Stones because they're just a little funkier. It's kind of more my style, but. I actually went to see Paul McCartney uh, recently when he came through town, and uh, Jesus, man, that dude, he blew me away. And uh, he played so many uh, songs from the, the Beatles back catalog that he actually kind of sold me on it. And I think he he swung me to to their side of uh, to their side of the fence. And I realized that's not the full Beatles band, but uh, it was enough to en- enough to swing me. So, how about you? Oh, I've always just felt they were they were overrated. Like it was just at the time nobody had heard them before. Yeah, the Beatles and the Stones though that contrast. It's like every picture I've seen of the Beatles when they play, they're in like suits, and yeah, you yeah. can tell that they probably had like a good night's rest. They had a good meal. They had a pre <laughs> a pre set meal, and yeah. uh, and then you look at the Stones. It's like you got Mick Jagger's just like living off of like cocaine and women, and they you know it's more about like the sex drugs rock and roll lifestyle so yeah, it's yeah, yeah. uh it's it's polar opposites like i said i just yeah I, we don't need to go deep into it because we're a hockey show but uh that was ben's point now to his uh his the back half of that question there yeah your dark horse picks who do you got uh and don't say vancouver no oh, well, that's my dark horse no <laughs> probably uh from the east I, I still think carolina i mean if, if you guys haven't heard ryan and i we were on beaks podcast uh, about a week ago and we were kind of talking about this so for me i'd, I'd probably pick uh, carolina out of the east and then out of the west dallas is, is is my pick i don't know if they're really considered a dark horse but uh, most people probably don't watch them because they're kind of boring but uh man they can they can choke the life out of anybody so I think a Dallas Carolina final is, is something that I could completely see, and that would actually be a really interesting series with uh, the, the two different contrasting styles. But that's a series that I can see Dallas winning. Yeah, and if that was the case, those fan bases would grow, and then Max Kellerman would realize hockey's bigger than uh, what he thinks. <laughs> I, I, my dark horses for the West, I go Colorado, and I, and like kind of like Dallas, I don't think that they're as much of a dark horse. It's just that I like people are saying St. Louis because they they were leading the West, but also in the Pacific, like Edmonton, they have, they've got the two top scorers in the game. Uh, people have said Vegas. I mean, I, I kind of think Vegas as well is a bit of a dark horse, but Colorado is my pick out of the West. Uh, the East, I'm a Caps fan. Obviously, I'd love them to win, but if it's not going to be them, dark horse pick. I hate to say it, but Toronto. I it just I, It Ugh. would pain me. It would pay me, and it would be such a Toronto thing. That it, they would win the cup in the middle of a pandemic where they're not allowed to like really have a parade, <laughs> but but at the same time, I just think you know those guys. There's just too much talent there, and uh, you know the the acquisitions of Tyson Berry and Jack Campbell and uh, Kyle Clifford. Like 
the Leafs are all in. And I, I do think that the youth is on their side because some of these guys that are maybe sitting around doing nothing uh, and now they're getting, they're trying to work themselves back into shape. It's a little, a little harder to do when you're 30 and, and above when you're 22. Yeah. Uh, you can, you can do that. You can do that relatively quickly. And so I, I kind of feel like the Leafs are a dark horse pick. Beautiful. Well, Ben, man, thank you so much for that voicemail. And again, anybody else, if you got a message you want to shoot in, we'll be happy to, uh, happy to respond and happy to play it on the pod. Ryan, do you think you could let anybody else know how they can get a hold of us? Yeah, guys, as always, leave us messages on Anchor, uh, voicemails. You can always always connect with us as well uh, via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube at The Hockey Minute. And, uh, you know, feel free to drop us a line. Like, leave us comments, uh, DM us. I mean, we're always happy to hear from, from fans and what we, you know, what we need to be doing better. I was taking a look at some of the demographics. We've got one guy in Israel. Shout out to you. And uh, so, you know, we'll be, uh, maybe we'll have him on. We can talk about hockey in Israel. But uh, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. From Ryan and Brandon, we'll catch you next time on the Hockey Minute. We'd like to take a second to thank you, the listener, for joining us. And a big thanks goes to our writers and production team, Jules, Mark, and Matt. We couldn't do this without you. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at The Hockey Minute, as well as leaving voicemails on our anchor page, at Hockey Minute. And always make sure to subscribe to whichever platform you listen to your podcast. That's going to do it for us. This is Brandon and Ryan. We'll talk to you next time on The Hockey Minute. All right, Ryan. So, Henrik Lundqvist came out, and he said... Uh, Ah, he said that Brandon should have had his notes better to have the document with the quote in it. Sorry, Matt. Da-na, da-da-da-da.